Well, we honestly wanted to know how Sri Lankans have felt since getting the jab. Here are some of your reactions. Well, I'm not very happy about it. I'm really regretting that I took this uh, injection. And I'm also having a lot of uh, after effects. Uh, now I have already taken Singhalese uh, medicine. The negative thoughts, some that uh, psychologically there will be a uh, the side effect. People are viewing that uh, it will be cause some ill health. But moreover, the, that uh, total uh, that populations believe that this is very useful for the uh, people. So without fear, people now forget everything. They are uh, back to their normal life. Actually, I um, got the three doses. So far, I haven't come across any uh, problem. So I'm quite okay. Uh, vaccine was really good and it uh, helped me a lot. Uh, because uh, when you travel also, most of the countries, airports, uh, they were asking for the vaccine and especially my health, it was really helpful for me. Uh, yes, I have taken all doses of vaccine. Uh, I feel uh, uh, that now I am suffering from uh, some side effects. I think it is uh, due to the results of the, the vaccine. I don't feel like earlier. Some health problems are there, some complications are there. Uh, shortness of breath, swollen feet and uh, fed, uh, very uh, uncomfortable feeling is always there due to that uh, side uh, vaccine. I think it is uh, a side effect of the vaccine. I have taken COVID vaccine and all the boosters. I've been suffering from side effects since I got them. I don't feel uh, healthy as I did before. Uh, there are some issues that I have to deal with. Some positive, some negative. Uh, we have to actually talk about this. Let's get more on that and for that joining me now uh, via Zoom from Hobart, Tasmania is Dr. Julie Sladen who is with the organization Australians for Science and Freedom. She is a secretary of that organization. Dr. Sladen is a medical doctor and writer with over 25 years of clinical uh, experience across multiple disciplines in Australia and the UK. Thank you very much doctor for being here. I really appreciate it. Now, there are many concerns, uh, doctor, uh, report, uh, concerning reports worldwide uh, regarding the side effects of these vaccines, which now seems to have been a rush job to address a pandemic. In hindsight, we shouldn't have acted the way we did. What are you learning about these uh, vaccines, especially their side effects? Well, we're learning a lot of things as time goes on. I mean, obviously, we had concerns right from the beginning, given that there was um, a very very rushed, what seemed to be a rushed um, approach to putting out vaccines on a brand new platform. And we know from medicine that it actually often takes a decade to um, develop a new product and especially a new product that involves uh, a new technology and a new platform. Now, mRNA vaccines have been, or gene therapies, have been around for decades, but we've never used them in this way. So that really did um, alert the medical and scientific community to start looking out for some of the things that we suspected might happen, but certainly hoped wouldn't. And we had some early reports from um, the US and the UK, because in Australia, we received the vaccines um, about six months sort of after all of that rollout started around the world. And we were seeing um, interesting reports come out of inc increased clotting um, events. We were also seeing um, increased reports of uh, blood cancers um, and we're also seeing immune problems come out. And I was watching this very carefully because, you know, obviously as a, as a doctor I, I need to keep informed and we were, of course, getting information from the government and our local health sources, but you know, it also paid attention to look and see what was happening overseas as the vaccine program rolled out there. Absolutely. Uh, doctor, the World Health Organization is playing these side effects uh, concerns uh, as a matter of minor matter. And they say that uh, the benefit outweighs the concerns. Your thoughts? My thoughts, uh, I completely disagree with that assessment. And I think the data actually um, bears that out. I mean, when you actually look at the threat of what we knew about the um, the COVID infection and, you know, we're, we're looking back to sort of March, April, May 2020, there were some um, epidemiologists that actually did some studies on, you know, how bad was the infection and what they discovered was that the um, case fatality rate or the infection fatality rate 
was actually hovering less than 1%. And the people who were vulnerable were the elderly and those who are who had multiple comorbidities. Now, then when you look at the vac vaccine program, what then you would want to do would be to focus on the people who were most at risk, um, not the whole general population, especially when you have a whole lo lot of unknowns with a new vaccine platform. Um, as we've seen the vaccination program roll out around the globe, what we have seen across um, Europe and the US and Australia is we've seen a, a, a huge spike in adverse events. And, and it's not just that we've all of a sudden given a whole lot of vaccines and that then creates a number of um, increased adverse events. This, this, this number of adverse events has surpassed the adverse event rate for all other vaccines together for the last 50 years. It's a huge safety signal. Um, but not only that, even more worrying, um, something else is going on in that we're now seeing um, increased rates of excess mortality around the world, which really needs to be looked at in earnest. Um, we And we're also seeing in, uh, increased rates, and this is data that's just been presented recently by Ed Dowd from Finance Technologies, and they've been looking at insurance claims for um, people who are unable to work. Um, and that is going through the roof as well. Doctor, should people uh, who basically either been uh, forced or socially forced to take these vaccines be concerned? Is that something they can do to safeguard themselves? I think there are many things that, that can be done. Um, there is a lot of there are a lot of healthcare workers and doctors researching this around the globe because obviously there are people who have suffered both vaccine injury, which is well recognised now, and long COVID. And the things that seem to work well are fasting it seems to be very helpful for some people, um, but there are also some uh, pro products and and um, there's guidance that's actually available. The frontline critical care doctors have um, produced some good guidelines on what things can help for people who are suffering with things like fatigue or blood clots or um, neurological problems. So there, there's a lot of hope. And I think one of the most important things is to look after your, your basic health. You know, if there are things that you know that you should be doing by looking after your diet, um, doing regular exercise, making sure you get outside and get you know, fresh air and also um, spending time with loved ones, you know, because all of that contributes to good health. And I would um, really encourage people if they're concerned about their health to start, you know, doubling down and doing the things that they know that they should be doing to look after their health so that they can d then protect themselves in the long term. Absolutely. Indeed, uh, I wish I had more time uh, to continue this conversation as this is very important to everyone watching, but we have to leave it at that. That was uh, Dr. Julie Sladen from Australia's, uh, for Australians for Science and Freedom. Thank you.